Will you please join me in the prayer of illumination? As Christ ascended to heaven, our spirits are lifted to you this day, O God. Your spirits fill the universe. We dwell within your embrace and cannot escape from your watchful care. You are with us here, choosing us as apostles and instructing us in the way we should go. Focus our limited understanding on the person of Jesus, that all he did and taught might come alive in us during this hour. Grant to us convincing proof of your promises as we welcome your winds of change in our lives. Amen. Forgive me if I keep getting up and down because I'm, I'm not familiar with what's going on. Um, welcome, welcome. Whoever you are and wherever you are in life's journey, you are welcome here to this church, First Congregational Church of Sharon. Um, before asking for any uh, announcements, I do have um, something I'd like to share with you. I had breakfast uh, just the other day with a lovely, lovely, lovely person and she wanted me to give you all of her love. And that was Reverend uh, Helen Nablo. Uh, she wanted me to say hello to all of you. Are there any announcements uh, we have? I want to thank everybody who donated time and treasure and talent to the yard sale we made. $365 roughly. And considering the fact that we had to close it early, I think that's pretty good. <laughs> I just wanted to talk about the Historic Building Preservation Fund. Um, as you know, we want to, uh, it is growing, and we want to thank everybody who's pledged already. We've been given a generous $25,000 matching fund grant. So in the month of May, if we can match the $25,000, we'll get, have 50,000. So we're halfway there now in our fund. As you know, our goal is 300,000. So you can see how really nice this side of the church looks. Uh, we now have to do the back side, which is about $105,000. Uh, to finish the back side of the church. So I have pledge cards. Be willing to talk to anybody about the fund and how you might contribute. Um, it is for a good cause. And yesterday we had 300 people between the plant sale and the yard sale. And I don't know how many people came up to me to say, this church looks great with a new siding. So we have to work on the back now. Uh, so come and see me if you would like a pledge card. Are there any further announcements? Please stand as you are able and join in the call to worship. In awe and wonder, we lift our eyes to the heavens. We raise our songs of joy to the ruler of all time and space. We gather to remember the one who shared our common lot, Jesus Christ, who visited this earth and dwells in heaven. We celebrate the life and ministry of Jesus. We rejoice in the hope which Christ has called us. We open ourselves to baptism with the Holy Spirit. We expect to be empowered as witnesses in today's world. Please remain standing as you are able and join in singing hymn 353.
Please be seated. Please join me in the prayer of confession. Hear us, God, our hope, for we have too easily denied our heritage amid the competing claims all around us. We declare ownership of what is only lent to us for a time. We strive for knowledge and control beyond our capacity, wanting power on our own terms rather than through the unpredictable empowerment of your spirit. Sometimes we stand on tiptoe to view what is out of sight, then arrogantly conclude that there is nothing to see. O oh God, open our eyes, our hearts, that we might be forgiven and find true life in you. Amen. Hear us as we pray. Time of silent prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today's scripture reading is from Acts chapter 1, verses 1 through 11. Uh, 1 through 10. No, no, it is 1 through 11. Sorry. In the first book, Theopolis wrote that all about Christ did taught from the beginning until the day when he was taken up to heaven. After giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen, after his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit in not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom of Israel? He replied, it is not for you to know the time or the periods that the Father has sent by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all of Judea, Samaria, and the ends of the earth. When he had said this, they were watching he was lifted up and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, they were gazing up towards heaven. Suddenly, two men in white robes said, men of Galilee, why do you stand there looking up towards the heaven? This Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. This ends the reading.
thank you again for having me here today. When Reverend Heike told me her theme for Easter Eastertide was living the resurrection, my first thought was, oh, that's cool. I think I could preach around that. Later on, I realized that today is the last day of Eastertide, the last Sunday before Pentecost, Ascension Sunday. What on earth can I preach about on this Ascension Sunday that's going to keep with Reverend Heike's theme? Then it hit me. Jesus is leaving this earth in bodily form. Now what are the disciples going to do? And what does that mean for us? What they're going to do is evangelize. And that's what we all should be doing. Now here's Merriam Webster's dictionary on evangelism. Spreading of Christianity, especially through activities of evangelists. Number two, crusading zeal, great enthusiasm, fervor or zeal for a particular cause. You good people already do so much with your food pantry and your community outreach. However, like everything else in life, I think we could do a little bit more. Now before we start saying, I can't evangelize, let's focus for a moment on the second definition the one about fervor and zeal. Now, when I finished my first year of culinary school, we were expected to work somewhere in the food industry during the summer. Friends of mine got jobs in restaurants, hotels, country clubs, and different eating establishments. I had been working at Salem State College since I was 13, starting as a dishwasher, and by the time I was 19, I had several years of cooking under my belt. Because of my experience, I went the institutional route. The school recommended I apply to a summer camp that was looking for a chef. I applied, I interviewed, and I was asked to be a chef at the all-girls Catholic summer camp in Gloucester. The pay was good, and I also got the use of a small cabin on the far side of camp. Now living in Salem, I only used the cabin for naps and one night every two weeks. The camp had a two-week program, and, every other sun and I had every other Sunday off. On the last Saturday of the program, before the campers went home, we served a big turkey dinner. That's why I needed to stay in the cabin, so I could get up and put eight to 10 turkeys in the oven at 4 a.m. I'll never forget my first day. I arrived at 8 a.m. Monday morning. The first meal I was going to make wasn't until Saturday. I met the groundskeeper. I met my assistant, a 13, 14-year-old boy. I'm standing in the kitchen thinking, I'm alone. Now what? Picture the disciples standing with two men with white robes saying to them, men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up towards the heaven? I could see the disciples looking at each other when Jesus left and them saying to themselves, now what? These good people followed Jesus for three years, listened to his teaching and watching him perform miracles and witnessed his death and resurrection. They had just spent the last 40 days listening to Jesus again, guiding them and encouraging them. And now Jesus has been lifted off into the heavens. Now what? Well, I felt that way standing in the kitchen in Gloucester. I felt lost. Could I cook 125 to 150 meals three times a day? What would I make? How can I manage all this? Not sure I could do it all, so I made a phone call. I called my mom. To me, the wisest woman on earth. The first thing she said was, you can do it. And then she said, remember your training and call the people you know and ask for advice. So I started making calls. Chefs I knew, classmates I knew, and the helpful advice came rushing in. I needed to put a two-week menu together. The advice I got was, don't try and reinvent the wheel. Use last year's menu and just add your touches to it. 
So off I went. I got tons of ideas on how to use the government food we got for free. And soon, people were calling me for advice. Now in Mark 16, verse 15, Jesus says, go into the world and proclaim the good news to the whole creation. Paul writes in 2 Timothy, preach the good news, be ready at all times, and tell people what they need to do. That's what the disciples and us, by extension, are asked to do. Preach the good news, or in similar terms, preach the gospel. The disciples began just doing that, sharing and spreading the news and events of Jesus, eventually writing things down like the gospels and Paul's letters and much more. When I got stuck on how to make something, I read the recipes in my book, or I asked another chef. When I have life questions, I read the Bible, or I reach out to family and friends. It's easy for me to evangelize. I'm a minister. This is what I do. It could and should be just as easy for you good people to evangelize as well. Now, St. Francis is famous for saying, preach the gospel at all times. When necessary, use words. That's a wonderful way of leading and preaching by example. But what if? What if we want to tell more? What are we to do? Remember how Merriam-Webster's dictionary defines evangelism? Remember number two? Crusading zeal, great enthusiasm, fervor, or zeal for a particular cause. How many people do we know who will gladly tell you about their favorite political candidate? They're evangelizing. How about a cause they support, such as cancer awareness or drug addiction? They're evangelizing. What about when people talk about LGBTQ or immigration concerns? They're evangelizing. What I'm saying is let's add Jesus to that conversation. A couple of weeks ago, I was having dinner with some golf friends. There were about six of us around the table when someone asked, what are our plans for the weekend? I was the only one that had church included in the discussion. Now, I know three of the guys attend church regularly. I wanted to ask them why I didn't say anything And as I write this, I think maybe I should have asked that question, but I didn't. When we like people, we often want to include them in our lives. We have dinner together, we play golf together, we go to the movies. When was the last time you invited someone to go to church with you? When was the last time someone invited you to go to church with them? Let's put aside our friends for a moment and talk about family. Some of the best times I remember was going to church with my grandparents and going to breakfast afterwards. We could all be making these kinds of memories. As a church community, we don't have to do this alone. In industry and in business, we network. We network to find jobs. We network to buy different products. We network to find out if somebody's credit is any good. Perhaps we could network among ourselves on how to introduce our faith to others. Sometimes just telling people that you go to church is enough to start a conversation. How many people, especially women, wear a cross as a piece of jewelry? We could ask what church they go to. We have no difficulty asking people about their political affiliations or their thoughts about social or political views. Evangelism is not a dirty word. It's part of living the resurrection of Christ. We don't need to be standing on the street corner pounding a Bible telling everyone that we see and meet about the resurrected Jesus. That's just one way of evangelizing, not the only way. Some of us don't have a problem with public displays of affection. Who loves you more than God? I know we love God. Why can't we show it? 
The easiest way to show we love God is to love our neighbors. Jesus not only showed us how to love, but he also showed us that he loved us as well. We have the tools. We know what we should do. Sometimes we just need a little motivation. At the ascension, Jesus bodily left this earth. He may be gone, but not forgotten. Let's keep reminding ourselves and others that Jesus is always with us. And let us remember to add Jesus to our conversations. Amen.
Ah, man, how lovely was that? Now is the time as a congregation we come together to share our joys and our concerns. Are there any joys and concerns that we'd like to lift up in prayer today? Well, let us be in prayer. Dear God, we come before you in prayer, humbly asking that you help people in this world and that you be with them during their journey, whether their journey is through illness or their journey in suffering through addiction or their journey in suffering through mental illness. Be with them as they walk this earth and be with us as we walk with them, providing them the helping hand and the comfort that they need. Be with them always and let us pray the way Jesus taught us by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. To run a church, we need time, talent, and treasure. And to that right now is the time where we ask for some of the treasure. I'd like to ask the ushers to please uh, collect the morning offering. Please let us join together in a prayer of dedication. May our offerings express our care for one another and our commitment to serve the word in the name of Christ. Help us to use well all the resources you entrust to us. Equip us as forgiven and forgiving people to carry the good news to people we meet every day as well as to unknown sisters and brothers who live in desperate circumstances we could scarcely imagine. May our gifts in our lives praise you. Amen. Please remain standing as you are able and join and sing our closing hymn number 465.
Please be seated for the benediction. Dear Lord, bless us on this beautiful day, the day that Jesus rose to you and sat by our side. Give us the strength and courage and the intuition to talk about Jesus when we go forth. And let us remember that sometimes the best talking we can do about Jesus is by not saying a word. Let us go forth in his name, and we pray all these in the name of Jesus. Amen.